Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here with Vicious RV with the 2970 Imagine. Only about 7,600 pounds dry weight despite its size and two big deep like fifth wheel size slides. That is not too bad given the overall size of this thing. This is another one that I'm bringing to you by request. A lot of people said, Josh, uh, Steve, I'd love to hear your spin on a 2970. Well, here we go. Um, this is a little bit of what I'm going to call a flat deck fifth wheel, but also a little bit of what I'm going to call a portable park model, which is not a real term. It's one of my goofy nerdisms that I came up with. But what I mean by that, with opposing slides at an island in the living room, it has awesome big destination space. But with no slide in the bedroom, although it has good bedroom storage, as we'll get to see it's a floor plan that is still somewhat portable although I don't know that I'm going to recommend a half ton to tow this one for any significant distance maybe a short distance like if you're just like oh, I, I camp seasonal around town but I have to pick my camper up over the winter time okay maybe a heavy half ton for something like this but for long distance towing it's long enough I feel like it would boss a half ton around and that's the kind of good fare safety information and, and points and tidbits I want to give you as we go through these. Um, I, I like the color. Some people don't like the sort of Euro-inspired interior on this. It's not a full-on Euro interior, but it is, um, you know, similar. You can see some of those inspirations in the cabinetry. I like the lighter color palette. I love all the windows on the door side. I love the, uh, the double awning, the double air conditioner, and a partridge in a pear tree on this thing. But hot, cold, camp rated. Um... Nice enclosed uh, wet bay, again, kind of like a fifth wheel. And that's another thing. If you're looking for something big living space, but you just want to leave it parked somewhere, but maybe you got a hitch in your giddy up and going up and down stairs might be an issue, you might skip the fifth wheel and consider something like this. And you know, folks, um, oh, there's a lot of times I'm very Switzerland. I'm very neutral on the RVs that I go into. I, I point out the things that I, I, I like or you might be concerned with or etc. But I don't usually play favorites. Today I'm playing favorites. This, I personally feel, is my favorite best executed version of this floor plan I've ever seen from any manufacturer ever. And understand, I have seen a lot of trailers. Now, it's not without a couple little glitches or uh, hiccups here or there. And there's a few little areas you could maybe sharpshoot it and say, well, brand X, Y, or Z did this, that, or the other thing. Sure. But overall, uh, this one, this one's hard to beat. One of the very few critiques you might have for it is if you just don't happen to like this decor, which I do. I like the light, creamy colors here. It makes everything look and feel nice and open and bright. So does the lights and the windows and the vaulted ceiling. But if you don't like that, well, there's no other option. This is what they do with these right here. Um, <clears throat> the uh, it, Like I said, it's kind of Euro-inspired. You see those little uh, light accents on those upper cabinets right there. Reminds me a lot of, uh, say, like a lot of Class B vans uh, in North America that kind of tap into that. But look at just the window coverage in this is incredible. Um, all of it over here on the door side and uh, giving you amazing looks at your campsite. So once again, if you're going to spend a longer time at a park, you're going to like this thing. We'll get a better look at this theater seat opened up in just a minute. I do want to point out, though, that is heat and massage. <laughs> the, we got the uh, the Thomas Paine series. T-Pain! <laughs> in the house. <gasps> See, this is the kind of smarter execution I'm talking about. How often have you heard me talk about in theater seats how um, manufacturers have the USB outlets going in in to your leg on a theater seat. It's stupid. I always feel like I'm going to break it. Put it up out of the way. Nailed it. Yes. Thank you. See that? And frankly, you could probably still use it over by the dinette a little bit if you wanted to. That is, see, that's just better. And did you notice that light kick off over there by the entry door? It is a motion sensitive light. Now, um, you don't have a full viewing window in the entry door, but, um, <laughs> I mean, we can definitely see who's a knocking on the door uh, over there. What was it? Three's, three's coming. John Ritter, uh, who's who's knocking on the door? Like, how did that song start? Oh, my Lord. Sorry, my brain really jumped uh, off the tracks. Um, <laughs> wow. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. And while this is a nice big, 
like open couples model, it has some pretty decent guest capacity. First of all, uh, with the booth dinette versus a table and chairs, you're gaining an extra little sleeping space there. Not to mention some extra storage we'll see in a minute, but blackout roller shades all the way around. It seems like your more premium lightweight trailer brands are starting to adopt that. I, for one, welcome it. I like those a lot more. I also tend to encounter far fewer problems with them when I'm doing my videos and setting things like this up. I have, uh, it's very rare I have to report anything to, uh, like, a service manager on these. Now, um, notice how this recliner chair here can still kick back. And I'm not going to really count that as a proper sleeping space, but a little kid? That's something a lot of little kids don't mind. And I wanted to point that out because depending on how many people are coming over for the weekend, if you also deploy the big trifold sleeper sofa, which is probably admittedly going to be your primary guest sleeper, you can still utilize that one theater seat space. Now remember, I told you how that TV can pivot around here. Let me see if I can weave my way through all this stuff. If you uh, were laying down at the end of the night, if you were over on the trifold, or if you were just sitting on the sofa lounging during the day, you can see that there's uh, there's really not a bad seat in the house here. Anywhere you are in the living room, you've got yourself a good shot at the screen. But of course, directly across from the theater seat there is going to be your, you know, primary kind of viewing angle. Naturally, we've got the Let's see, we'll call it today a bunion burner down below here. 5,000 BTU space heater, baby! And I tell you what, man, those things do a fantastic job of pumping some bonus heat into the RV without chugging your furnace real hard. Because that is the thing. They actually put a pretty, I think it's 35,000 BTU furnace on these. That's, a, that's kind of a grand design thing is uh, find the furnace that any other manufacturer uses, and then it's like they always say, well, give me plus 5,000 BTUs. They always have a little more aggressive furnaces on these things. Sealed edge press membrane counters. It is a symmetrical island, but it's big enough that doesn't bother me. Now, normally a big island means you're going to block the refrigerator use in transit. So how's this one going to play out in road mode? Well, stay tuned and find out. I don't know yet. I haven't closed the slides, but I will before we're done. Um, the farm sink here, something that they've uh, started doing, I, uh, I kind of like this. I, I like the cutting board and dish drying rack, but they'd use just the, the big one-piece uh, roll-away kind of dish strainer, and I like that. I think that works for me, too. It just awesome drawer space. Both sides of the countertop have drawers uh, to the floors, basically, with a huge wastebasket space. All the things that I'm constantly whining about that brand X, Y, or Z might not always do... They're doing all of those things here, and then some. Now, uh, you know, you can, uh, I mentioned it kind of briefly earlier in passing, but table and chairs or booth, whatever setup works for you. Actually, which way would you like? Would you prefer the booth uh, with the floating table, or would you prefer a fixed table with floating chairs? Either way, something's fixed and something moves. Also, um, I'm going to get you right up and close and personal with this right here. But as I was getting the table out of the way, I discovered a handy household power outlet right there. And whether it's phone chargers or coffee makers or just a fan or something, uh, or a laptop plug or something like that, those can be awful nice and awful handy. That's one of those things that um, you don't realize you're missing it until you don't have it. And speaking of missing things, if I'm learning my way around Grand Design... I think I'm going to find some power outlets under that overhead cabinet. And yes, indeedy doodly, right there on the left and the right side. Um, something Imagine's very good about this, sometimes transcend or reflection I find personally guilty of, is they're, like, there's not dark spots in this RV. They put lights all over the place in here. Um, occasionally, I'll bump into a reflection or a transcend where it just feels dark here or there. We're looking at the 12-volt compressor fridge today. There is a gas electric two-way option. Either way, no matter what, you get a factory standard solar package. Uh, so, no matter what you're doing, you're going to have some extra juice coming into this baby. I love this. The light, bright, adjustable pegboard kind of organizer down here. A big drawer is nice. Giving me a way to put big stuff in there and secure it, even better. Um... The, uh, the pantry over here also has a motion light in it, kind of like we saw by the entry door, although I've turned that off, uh, or it didn't turn off, like I haven't been near it recently enough. It, there's, there, you know, this little area, if I'm going to nitpick a little bit, yes, no side splash. Okay, we can move past that, but this feels like a power outlet maybe on the left side of that cabinet for something over there. That could be a nice little appliance station, although we've already seen where they've got that. 
But one area where I really do think they genuinely missed, and I think uh, regular viewer Mr. Aaron Thor, if you are watching this, I'm pretty confident you will, you'll agree with me. The Pivot TV is nice, but they wasted the opportunity for storage behind it. Because look at how deep that is. There's a big dead chunk of empty air back there. And I know that they gave us incredible storage in this RV, but I want to be able to get to every single nook and cranny if possible. And normally, Grand Design's very good about that. Oh, geez, speaking of which, um, <laughs> there's more storage down here beside the sofa that I missed. So my point here is not that the, sto the storage is awesome for sure. It's just that it could actually still somehow be a little bit better. And I don't think it would even really cost more money to open the space up behind the TV. So, the reason I'm making such a point about this, if you are a handy dandy, then chances are you could open that up back there, add yourself a little, what my grandfather called his Baptist medicine cabinet, and just, you know, level up your storage a step further. And I don't know what you're really going to be able to glean from this, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to turn off all the lights and just let the windows, even on this overcast day, do the work. It's still not bad in here, but isn't it crazy how much life the lights breathe into these things? That's why that's wild to me. Absolutely wild. Now, um, moving over here into the bathroom, this isn't this is an area where it's like they really hit it or missed it with like nothing in between in my book. But even that being said, this is still my favorite version of this floor plan I've ever seen. You know, great room around this. Very good room. Even in uh, uh, considering, there we go, that's the word I'm looking for, in consideration of the fact you've got an extra linen cabinet above. It's, it's small enough and it's high enough. It's not in the way. And speaking of, of high enough, the vaulted ceiling on this is high enough that at 6263, I can stand in here and be good. It does have six and a half foot sidewalls, but the vault opens it up nicely in that rectangular shower. This is the area that I don't like. I don't like open cabinet storage like this. And man, a lot of manufacturers have started doing that in bathrooms. Now, there's certain times like maybe that cabinet is next to a towel rod. Okay, I get that. But this is not. There could absolutely be some kind of door coverage on that. But as an owner, the reason that's not like a hard disqualifier for me, I could easily add some little netting on that and make it work. And you know, this is why I open stuff up. I would have assumed there was a nice big wastebasket space uh, uh, sized cabinet under that sink. And it's not wasted. You know, that'd be good for like toilet paper. You could stack toilet paper rolls up in there. But that's about all it's good for because they got a little wiring around there. But at the same time, I don't dislike the idea now that I'm seeing it that a lot of my wiring stuff is easy to get to and it's all color coded, which is fantastic. Um, so, you know, that's a give and a take. I do like all the drawer space over here and, and it, it, you know, they're just, they're not afraid to spend a couple extra bucks on drawers. Well, okay. Let me rephrase that. I, I'm guilty of saying stuff like that. Sometimes I'll say the manufacturer spends more money on it. They don't. And frankly, dealers don't. At the end of the day, you're the one spending the money on it. And that's what I want to point out, is what features this has, so you can decide, is it worth spending your money on? Um, like, for instance, again, I don't love the small fan in here, but a Hangs Vortex fan, it's like just a little bit over 100 bucks to update and up, uh, to upfit one of those into there, and it doesn't even screw with your factory roof seals the way a big Max Air fan does. For an upfit, Hangs is my personal go-to little pro tip from Uncle Josh. And no, I'm not sponsored by Hangs. It's just a product that I personally find value in and I believe in. I mean, you know, unless you wanna, you wanna get in on this, Hangs? You wanna, you wanna do something? No, no, no never mind, never mind. How do you spell airflow? H-E-N-G-S, Hangs. Which would mean you spell it incorrectly. Still, still no, nothing. You don't wanna, no, no sponsorship? Now, I don't, I, I think about the only knock anyone might have against this bedroom is just that it is not king bed capable. The way they built in those big storage side stands, it is a queen only and it is a true queen, but everything else they did, I personally feel this is the best executed queen bedroom on the market today. And again, I don't typically have real strong opinions on stuff like that. I, I very truly see benefits in like this, that, and the other thing, but... For what I look for personally, this is the way I want a bedroom set up. So uh, to begin with, 
they give us bigger, deeper overhead cabinets. It's a far more squared off space. It obviously still radiuses up a little bit on the front wall, but not as bad as most brands. So when we get outside, I'm going to kind of explain a little bit of how they do that. Cause I think once we're outdoors, it's a bit easier to see. Uh, naturally we've got hanging wardrobe towers on both sides of the bed. Maybe one other potential criticism someone may have is that if uh, you feel boxed in uh, by this when you're sleeping, it might feel a bit tight, but those kind of CPAP pockets over there with the household and the USB outlets, I think those might give you enough negative space in front of your face that, uh, you know, you may not feel necessarily suffocated. Now, a, a, a cool thing here is also you see the dresser drawers that they have going on both sides of the bed, and it's very symmetrical. Like, both sides of the bed have the same storage, have the same power outlets, have the same, uh, you know, CPAP pocket or, or headboard pocket or whatever you want to call it. And there's household and USB outlets in there, but they also add additional household outlets down here. Now, maybe like a standing fan or something like that might work for you. I don't know. What would you use those for? And also, while we're asking, you know, Q&A time here, what do you think about this? Like, it's cool we have the Easy Lift bed storage. They have this plywood slide a bucket. I don't know. That is not a pretty name. That did, you know, sometimes I come up with some gold and sometimes I don't. And that was definitely uh, not gold right there. But would you, what would you use that for? Or would you just take it out and use this like a big trunk? Now, flip it around the other direction. If you're laying in bed looking forward, this is kind of what you're seeing right here. Being very careful, obviously, to make sure I keep my dirty shoes off of somebody else's bedspread since, you know, I'm not the final owner of this thing. A um, couple things. This is 50 amp. Up top, you can outfit it, just like you're seeing here, with a factory second air conditioner. And I kind of wonder, like, this is a big trailer. Second air feels right in here. But sometimes without a bed slide, it, I don't know that it necessarily feels necessary. Necessarily necessary? Yeah, you, you heard me. I said what I said. But at the same time, that's one of those things that, you know, you, you'll never regret having it. But man, you really might regret not having it. The good news with this being 50 amp and always second air prepped, that's something you could always add later if you found you regretted not having it. But remember when I said it doesn't have a bed slide, meaning it doesn't have that full front closet, but it still does an awesome job of storage in here. That's what I was talking about right there. Now, this bedroom-bathroom interchange that we're seeing here has become super common. And frankly, folks, I'm here for it because this, it gives me, frankly, more storage than a closet slide in the wall without additional seal points and with less TLC. Yeah, you know me. And uh, moonwalking out of the bedroom here, trying not to knock my noggin, that felt like it was a little bit closer than it looked. Uh, Taking a look at it in road mode, and to quote Dr. Emmett Brown from Back to the Future, road mode, where we're going, we don't need any road mode. So, the kitchen, the living room, they're out. They're flat out. You gotta be at a destination, you gotta open a slide to get to those, but... The, uh, you gotta make a travel potty stop or on a long trip, if you need to make a sleepover stop, the bedroom and the bathroom are completely unobstructed. And I like the look of these things. They have a very nice cosmetic appeal. They look good going down the road too. Uh, they are what I call Kathleen head turners. When you, uh, when you're going down the road and you see an imagines it by you, it always catches my attention. Um, the, uh, the other thing here, it's, it's, it's crazy how they've been able to get away with it, but a lot of other manufacturers haven't. They don't have the most swept back front nose design. And it's actually the shape of the front of this that allows them to do some things in a lot of their bedrooms, like provide a little bit better, more effective storage solutions, like bigger, deeper cabinet over the bed. I think it's swept back just enough. I don't know, man, they, they, they really know how to, 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 to nail that mark and ride that line very nicely on these. Uh, not to mention the neutral color palette is gonna look good behind pretty much any vehicle. And it looks like it's moving fast when it's sitting slow, doesn't it? Double power runnings is something that I really like uh, because, uh, you know, especially with 
Um, a big slide over here on the door side, it's really eating at a potential patio awning space. So that second awning right on the face of the slide is very nice. Now, I don't have those open, and my battery box is dwindling on me, so I don't have the opportunity to open it. What I can tell you is, uh, especially the awning arms on the face of that slide, they're going to be headbangers. You're going to have to pay attention to those, um, those extra little details. You know, speaking from a little bit of clumsy guy experience here. <laughs> now, up front. They have a front drop frame storage compartment. They're not exclusive in the industry with that, but they are uh, uh, one of a small number of brands that gives us a near fifth wheel sized front storage compartment. And actually, if you look over on the other side, you also see an enclosed docking station. I'll get you a better look at that uh, on the other side as we go. Um, I would probably just leave the outside speakers turned off myself being uh, up that, you know, I was kind of talking to somebody about this recently. Um, they're like, what is your deal with the outside speakers lately? Um, well, I, you know, I feel a certain way about it. I'm just sharing my opinion, and that doesn't mean that it's the only opinion. Now, admittedly, when I was younger, I'd rather have them up high. Crank up the tunes, brother! But, you know, as I've gotten a little bit older, um... I, I, I don't mind that volume being down a little bit lower. I used to play music in a Southern Michigan rock band, and to this day, my ears ring like crazy, and I wish I hadn't tried to be cool and not wear earplugs. I really wish I, I had done it the right way. And, you know, that's one of those things that when you're young and dumb, everyone says, oh, you know, you're going to hurt your hearing. You're like, whatever, I'm invincible. Nobody can teach you otherwise. Am I right? Oh, by the way, sorry, I got way off track. All the windows open for airflow. All the windows overlooking our campsite, which is nice. So you're not looking at the uh, this sweaty shirtless neighbor named Josh the RV nerd beside you. Oh, no way. No, no, thank you, sir. Nobody wants to see that when they look out the window. I don't even want to see myself shirtless when I get out of the shower. I turn the lights off so, you know, I don't have to look at myself in the shower. I'll put on a shirt before I put on pants. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where these videos are going to go. They just kind of take me for a ride. Now, um, Goodyear tires over here. That's one of the things that uh, uh, originally Jayco was like one of the only ones doing it. And then Rockwood and Grand Design and now Cougar's offering as an option. I'm, I'm glad to see better tires uh, coming into the marketplace. This is a model, again, I'm kind of calling it a portable park model. And it's long enough. I think having a good set of sneakers on this kit is going to be a good investment. Now, the underbelly of this, it is enclosed, it is forced air heated, and they use the same radiant barrier layering uh, through the belly, up the nose, and across the roof as, oh, like right back there, that, uh, that reflection fifth wheel, a solitude, a momentum fifth wheel, something like that, and they're able to pass the same hot, cold camp testing as those other big boy members of their family, as it were. And this is, this is almost, to me, like an honorary reflection. Um, actually, I think this is slightly longer than the shortest reflection trailer. I could be wrong about that, though. But it's really darn close. There's very few things at this point that separate an Imagine from a reflection trailer. Reflections are going to have standard TPMS. This is optional TPMS. Uh, it is prepped for it, though. Uh, reflections also have tank heaters. Um, you know, so a few things there, but they both have the nice docking center over here and something else I wanted to show you. Um, I'm going to get you upstairs in a minute to look at the solar package, but I've got the battery disconnect off right now. <clears throat> but if you look at that little voltage monitor, it's actually showing how the battery is not discharging, but it is actually, it's just, I almost said, re is recharging the proper phrase, but charging, I guess recharging would be a, a proper way to phrase that, not discharging. Um, but my little portable battery pack that I use to like run the slides and get the lights and stuff like that, it's actually replenishing my battery power right now so that maybe on the next video I might be able to do something like open the awning. Not sure, let's hop upstairs. Now I've been on more than one roof uh, in my career and uh, they're, they're not all created equal. They, on, sometimes on paper they can read awful similar but they're doing a couple fifth wheelie things here that are like, and they're not exclusive in travel trailers that are doing this, but um, you know, uh, the, the, the roof attic vent that we're looking at right here will do a fantastic job of helping the roof construction of the RV breathe in the hot summer months, which will really keep the interior heat level down. As will the fact you've got this stark polar white roof membrane, although 
if I'm being picky, many of you who watch me regular know that I do prefer white AC shrouds on things. That's something I like. Uh, Alliance does that pretty nicely, actually, but they're not really making, you know, travel trailers at this point, neither here nor there. Just kind of my brain went and went some other direction. And again, factory standard roof solar package, 165 watts on these. And I actually forgot my battery pack on this unit. I had the disconnect turned off, and even on this overcast day, uh, I was inside offloading my camera before coming back out, and it still topped my battery off in the little bit of time it took me to do that. Now, obviously, I wasn't running anything in the RV when I did it, but the solar package on this isn't terrible. Uh, now, if you like what you see here, but maybe the budget's just a little bit beyond what you want, or you don't plan on towing it, so the ultralight aspects of this RV don't really provide you any benefit, take a look in the video description. I'm gonna leave you links to a couple things, uh, a couple other similar floor plans from other builders that might be more accessible to your budget. Also, uh, links to uh, a link to our website where you can see if we have some of these in stock and where we have them. Grand Design's policies do prohibit us from publishing anything but max MSRP uh, on our website. I dislike that, I apologize, but unfortunately, I do need to ask you to call for price in the case of one of these. You notice I don't say this stuff on my other videos. It is seriously just a manufacturing policy that they enforce upon their dealers, and we play ball, we do things the right way. And think about it, if we're doing things the right way with them, we're gonna do things the right way with you. We don't do hidden dealer fees, we just do everything else, and if you appreciate the way we show the ups and the downs and the ins and the outs and the road modes and every other thing, I'd love it if you took a check uh, a second couldn't decide what I wanted to say. Second, to uh, click that subscribe button, like our video, leave me a couple comments. What do you like about this one? What do you dislike about it? What would you change given the opportunity? Or what could I do better and or different for you? I'd love to know because you guys drive my channel. This whole, this whole RV, this was done by request. You wanted to see it? So I got it done for you. So until next time, let me know uh, any other suggestions you have. I'll do my best to fill them in and take care. Stay safe, have fun. And best wishes from Bishes, everyone.